Hi everyone, welcome to the first of our Dr. JFrog integration webinar series. I'm Christina, the marketing event manager at JFrog, and I'm here with Baruch, our developer advocate. To ensure audio quality, everyone will be on mute during the webinar. Please feel free to type any questions you may have in the chat tab of the conference window. We'll answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar. You will be redirected to a short survey at the end, and all participants will receive a free t-shirt. You should expect to receive the video recording within a couple days after the webinar. Baruch? Thank you, Christina. Um, hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to, to, to kick off this uh, webinar series because um, one, as you, as you all know, Docker is now one of the biggest things in the industry, and, and I believe that JFrog support for Docker is, is one of the greatest that you can find. And hopefully, I will be able to present you with this, with this message during uh, those webinar series. So actually, we plan um, three, um, three webinars in this series, and today is going to be like an overview. Um, I will talk about the integration, um, what Artifacto has to do with Docker, what Bintray has to do with Docker, wh how they work together, and, and what you should expect in the following webinars. And then we are going to do a webinar dedicated to Artifacto support. Uh, for Docker and to Bintry support to Docker. And um, the, the following uh, webinars will have uh, much more, I would say, demos and technology details. Today it's more like setting stage and, and uh, getting you ready for, for, for whatever will come. So uh, my name is Baruch and I'm a developer advocate with JFrog. Uh, feel free to uh, find me on Twitter at uh, jbaruch. Um, or write me an email at jbaruch at jfrog.com. Um, of course, follow-ups uh, for the webinar, I will track them as well, and that's another way uh, to connect with me. So to, on today's agenda, um, we will talk a little bit about the DockerCon uh, that what, uh, took place last week in San Francisco. There were very big announcements especially um, in, on Docker uh, techno container technology itself, uh, the new container uh, spec that uh, is going to emerge, the new standard, et cetera, et cetera. There were few announcements uh, in our domain as well, in the domain of image management and uh, image distribution, and uh, I will uh, try to bring you uh, the news if you didn't see the keynotes. Or, or the talks, and we will talk about our JFrog vision on how private image registry should look like um, and, and what it should do. Um, then we'll talk about uh, our, uh, our take on, on uh, how a hub, public or private image hub, should look like and what it should do. We will talk about the integration between the two, and uh, then I expect to have plenty of time for uh, your questions, so feel free to type any question that you have in mind in the chat panel, as Christina said. We are monitoring it, and towards the end, uh, we will have plenty of time to answer any of those, hopefully, at least. Okay, so now let's start with, with a DockerCon. So I took a couple of screenshots from the second day keynote um, video, so you will understand what um, what it was mentioned uh, during during this keynote. So um, this is a list of the top requests by the community from the Docker uh, company. And as you can see, support is number one. Um, the number two is of course very very relevant for us, and that's on-premise uh, registry, which means that the, the industry uh, actually demands a tool um, in which they can manage their own images um, inside their organization in a proper way. Um, one might say that there is an on-premise registry. You have the official open source registry image that you can install in your organization and use. So how comes this uh, the exact request is second in the, in the list of things to do. And the answer is, of course, that the open source registry does not deliver. 
and it does not deliver in, in, in very many ways. It's very primitive, it's very basic, it doesn't have any authentication, um, it doesn't have any security policies, it doesn't know how to do much, etc., etc. So uh, that's the reason, and, and I would say that this number two is actually a request for a operational on-premise registry, because what is there now, it's not so much. And um, actually, the, the, the answer of, uh, of Docker to that is what they call the trusted Docker, Docker Trusted Registry, DTR. Docker Trusted Registry, and those are the highlights of, um, of this tool. And, and all those features are extremely important. Of course, on-premise registry server, this is what we are talking about, with integration to um, your um, existing enterprise security infrastructure. For some reason, only LDAP and Active Directory was selected. A role-based access control, this is very important, so people will be able um, to um, see, download, upload only the images that they are entitled to, and, uh, you know, um, this can be, uh, this should be very uh, fine-tuned in terms of um, image uh, maturity in, in terms of projects. Uh, we are going to talk about that. Uh, audit and event loggings, of course, we will need we need uh, we need to to control who downloads won, uh, what, where, uh, uh, and when, and is deploy, update, and rollback. So uh, this is a very important list, and it's a good set of features. I will um, leave up to you to check how the Docker Trusted Registry stands up to those requirements. We are going to uh, speak about Artifactory um, as, as a Docker registry and what Artifactory brings to answer those and much more uh, really important requirements. So let's start with enterprise systems integration. As I mentioned, um, the um, uh, Docker Trusted Registry integrates with um, LDAP and the Active Directory, of course, so Artifactory does, but we don't stop there. So Artifactory also supports SAML, which is a very important um, authentication uh, protocol in the enterprise. There are a huge amount of tools that work with SAML, and we felt that in order to um, answer the real enterprise request, for really big companies, doing only LDAP and Active Directory is not enough. Atlassian Crowd is another example of a very popular tool that uh, needs to be addressed if um, uh, we want to reach as many enterprise customers as possible. A another very interesting feature implemented um, in Artifactory to answer the enterprise system integration is the HTTP single sign-on. So if you have a web server that uh, through it, uh, you uh, authenticate to multiple systems. You can pass around a trusted HTTP header, and Artifactory supports that as well. So um, in the, um, when this header reaches the Artifactory with the request, the user will be automatically authenticated and logged in without prompting for additional username and password. Um, and, of course, one of the most powerful features in this regard is all the rest. So this covers the, the LDAP, SAML, Atlas and Crown, and HTTP uh, single sign-on trust a good percentage of the enterprise use cases, I would say 80%, but what about the other 20? For that, we uh, have this powerful feature of the user plugins um, in which users can code their own uh, authentication logic. So for example, they can reach um, other legacy enterprise systems that we don't support and get the information from that. And um, once they authenticate the user with the username and the password, indicate to Artifactory how this user should be logged in. Should it be logged in under certain groups with certain permissions? Maybe this user is admin, etc., etc. So actually, that's that's a great place to any extension that one will want. So we are uh, not limited not only to LDAP and Active Directory. We're actually not limited to any um, of the systems, and we let our customers to uh, code their own logic. So, and of course, those user plugins aren't used only for um, authentication, 
but um, for a lot of other usages as well. And um, during, as, as we move through the features, I will mention the user plugins here and there because the support for your own logic is across the board. So that's, that's nice. Um, we managed to get our users in. And now the question is what we, what, what we can do with information about the users. So of course, very naive model that um, exists in the Docker Trusted uh, Registry as of today is uh, the user can be admin or, it can, uh, or, or um, the user can read and write all the images or the user can only read the, all the images. Um, which is again a good start, but of course, uh, of course, it's not enough. Um, we need a better, we need a better support um, to answer uh, um, modern uh, software uh, development needs. We need support for groups, uh, and those groups um, can be both internal and external. And I mean by that, for example, you can manage your own set of users. Uh, which only makes sense in Artifactory. Um, and on the other hand, you may want to reuse all the existing groups that you have in your external uh, user management systems, like an LDAP, Active Directory, Crowd, etc., etc. And Artifactory, of course, supports both. So if you have um, a group of developers uh, in your um, crowd, in your Atlassian cloud system, uh, crowd system, and you want uh, to give a permission to all the developers in your organization, all, all you need to do is to map this group to a permission target in Artifactory. And this permission target, it's also a very flexible and powerful thing because permission target allow you to fine tune which permissions user or group may or may not have on a certain subset of artifacts. It might be, um, for example, um, a developer can only, or let's take another example, a QA team can only read the artifacts from the QA repository. And that means that by no chance or by, by the mistake, wouldn't happen, and the, the QA um, engineer will try to test something which is not ready to QA because it's in a snapshots repository. That cannot happen in Artifactory because of the very powerful um, of the very powerful uh, permission target model. Um, another example might be, of course, the the, the release repository, to, uh, the access to which should be uh, made public, and that's comparing to staging repository, access to which it definitely shouldn't be made public. Um, so the same user should have different visibility rules or different permissions on different repositories in, a, in one registry. Again, this is a very, I would say, um, basic feature of Artifactory. It's there from, from, from day one, uh, and um, it's extremely powerful and, and fundamental feature for any kind of serious uh, binary management, including, uh, of course, Docker image management. Okay, so that's, and that's the repository level visibility. And, and the question then is, okay, so we can, we, can isolate, we can isolate the users by repositories, but why we wouldn't do that? And the, the let's say, um, main usage of, of those uh, permission targets and these um, repository level visibility are the promotion pipelines. So promotion pipelines um, is, is a notion which is no, not new for any um, agile software development teams. Um, building continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines has been around for, for years. Um, and, and of course, you will want to have this functionality in your um, in your um, images registry as well. And of course, there is one uh, already there in Artifactory. Again, very mature uh, feature, been there for, for years. So using the Artifactory REST API, you can actually successfully promote images from one repository to another. And you can see the example here of, of an image being promoted from development to QA, to staging, to production, and eventually to Bintray uh, for, uh, for distribution. 
and um, all of them are uh, uh, all those promotions are actually performed free in terms of the file system usage because of the smart storage of, of Artifactory. Artifactory uses checksum-based storage, which actually makes move and copy of artifacts of any size, including huge Docker images, makes it actually free because the checksums um, aren't changed, and of course, um, uh, and of course, then the, the the move and the copy are uh, are free and and blazing fast. Um, and, and the question is, okay, so we have those promotion pipelines. The, the, they are very cool. And, and the next question is, how do we know what to promote? Or, or how can we express additional information about artifacts or images being promoted? And, and here uh, I'm going to mention another very, very critical feature of the modern binary repository, which, of course, Artifactor brings to uh, Docker images management and, uh, as well, and uh, we are talking about metadata. Um, the, 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 the major difference between using a share file system or an FTP server and, and the truly powerful binary repository is the ability to express additional information about your artifact, about the images in, in, in our case. We are talking about the ability to add custom metadata to those files, to those images, in any stage of their life cycle, which includes the creation time when the image is built, we are able to annotate it with the information about the build, how it was built, what have been done, from which layers this um, this uh, image uh, consists, what were the latest change, um, and and this kind of information. And based on this information, we are able to t to make smart decisions. We are able to promote. The, the, the artifacts in the correct manner. We can select the needed artifacts and promote them correctly. And of course, the metadata doesn't stop there. Every promotion brings additional information with it. When we promote artifacts from the development to the QA, we want to express why it was promoted the QA. For example, all the unit tests were passed or, or this kind of stuff. When we promote the artifacts from QA to staging, maybe we would like to to state the, the state of the artifact again, the, the maturity of the, of the artifact, of the images, etc., etc. Every promotion collects more and more information. And eventually, when the artifacts reach bin tray for distribution, all this metadata is supported as well. So when the artifacts, when, when the images are in bin tray already, they have all this information they collected for the life cycle. It's like, uh, it's like I would say, the, the identity of the, um, of the image as it becomes more and more mature. It's like, um, you know, the different information about, about the person in, 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 uh, in their lives. Um, he, he went to the kindergarten, and then he went to school, and then maybe a diploma or higher education, their work um, history, etc., etc. All this goes to the personality of this person for the rest of his life. The same should be done with your artifact, with your images. They collect all this information, and then eventually all the information is there. But how can we then use this information? What can we do with, uh, with that? So, for example, we would like to know what is liable for promotion. What can we promote? Which images can we promote from staging to production? This is a critical question. We need to do very smart selections here. And we, um, we provide, again, a very, very powerful mechanism of searches in Artifactory, what is called the Artifactory query language. So the Artifactory query language is... Um, uh, um, I would say generic query language that allows you to query on this metadata and get a unique set of uh, images that answer this criteria. So this is one one of the examples. This is not, a, I would say, not a promotion time query. This is a cleanup time query, but still um, it um, it can be very very useful. So here I would like to find all the items. Um, which uh, haven't been downloaded um, in the last year, um, and um, the 
those artifacts are not in the release repository and those artifacts are greater than one megabyte. Um, I want to find those artifacts and maybe uh, move them to, to trash or, or, or uh, delete them, etc., etc. This is just an example of what a query uh, language can do. And of course, the promotion uh, queries will be different. I want to find all the artifacts which are in a stage repository created by a certain build and annotated with the right metadata that actually um, means that all the checks and all the QA were passed successfully, and that means that I can promote it to be a, a, a release, um, this, kind of, um, this kind of support. Another very, very important feature that unfortunately I didn't even see in the list of the features that Docker is target to, uh, to answer is the, um, the question of a proxy and, uh, and replication. Is the feature of actually locality. So um, in a modern enterprise, the development um, is done on more than one location usually. You can have development teams in different places on different continents and the QA teams um, can be um, uh, remote as well. Um, so we actually live in the, in the global and, and, and connected world. But having a one registry in one location and connecting to this location from all around the globe is usually not um, as efficient as we would like it to be. And that's because of the na network limitations, especially when we are talking about images. We are talking about rather big files and, and uh, tossing them around from one continent to another when we need them might not be the most efficient way. Another question is the question of um, um, network, uh, network um, liability. So um, the connection goes up and down. Um, remote registries can um, go uh, down sometimes. And if I don't have a local copy of the images that I need, actually I find, may find myself in a situation when I cannot work anymore. So locality matters for, for a lot of reasons. And Artifactory, of course, we at Jeffro understand this for a very long time, and Artifactory supports various schemes of um, locality support. And, and, and the most obvious one um, is proxying the, the remote registries. So Artifactory, starting the last version, 3.9 that was released um, last week, supports um, remote uh, registries proxy, which means that once I download an image from a remote uh, registry, this image is going to be cached in my Artifactory instance, and I will be able to download it again and again without being um, dependent on the availability of the same image in the remote registry or availability of this remote registry at all. And that, of course, speeds up the build, improves um, the, the, the overall performance of the team, etc., etc. But uh, there is another way which is also very, very powerful, and that's the, the replication feature. Replication um, actually allows you to bring the binaries that you need, to, bri to bring the images that you need from one location to another once they are become available or based on a cron expression, uh, which means regularly. So um, you can mix and match both, and you can achieve locality in all the locations around the world, um, as you can see even in uh, Greenland, if you have a development center there, um, uh, whenever you need it, and um, being prepared for network la uh, latency or even uh, network failures. Um, there is another aspect of this kind of um, of, of this kind of um, network topology, and that's the high availability. Although having the same uh, image in uh, uh, in multiple locations. Um, is important and, and can provide you with kind of a backup in terms, um, in case one of the registers went down, we feel that there is a really better way to provide high availability. And uh, um, this is the high availability in Artifactory when we actually promise um, high availability 
in the single location, which means that you can set up one or more artifactory servers with uh, the exact set of images in the exact setup in one location and of course be sure that um, this cluster will always be up and your images will always be available. Again, this is something that matters for the real, uh, the really big uh, customers, the really enterprise setups and uh, you know the guys that take their um, development cycle very, very seriously and cannot allow any downtime, uh, even for, for uh, bringing up a standby server or, or getting to another location to get some kind of, of a cached uh, backup. So uh, uh, this is a very, very important, important feature. And we see more and more companies realize how important their binary repository, their local registry is and uh, choosing um, high availability setups, which is of course provided um, by, by Artifactory. Um, so once, once we have all that, once we have our registry really uh, uh, set up in the right way, we have all the, uh, we have all the um, user management in place, all the uh, authorization and um, authentication schemes. We have our promotional uh, pipeline set up. We use the metadata correctly. And we have those images ready for the next step. The next step, of course, is a distribution. And um, the, question, the question about distribution is where can we do it from? And we have actually two options. We can, we can stay with Artifactory, which is a valid way to distribute images. We have, our, uh, we have our release repository, we have a release quality um, um, images there, and we can just provide bin tray, uh, sorry, provide Docker with a, a, a host that points to this um, release repository. But is it enough? So we have a number, um, we have number of um, limitations when we are trying to do distribution from Artifactory. And uh, the limitations are, for example, we need to manage the bandwidth, which means that wherever we install our Artifactory release repository, this will be the location. And if people will try to get those images from different locations, we can use a replication or people will hit this uh, locality barriers. That's one issue. The other is how can we analyze the, um, the usage. Can we um, really know uh, who downloaded what and from when? Of course, Artifactory comes with a full support of logs, and uh, they are all Apache, um, Apache format logs, so you can analyze it using your favorite uh, log analyzer. It can be a uh, Sumo Logic, it can be a uh, um, stash, uh, log entries, whatever, whatever you use, um, or Splunk, whatever, whatever tool uh, you use, and of course it will give you a lot of information. But again, you need to build this type of system from scratch. Uh, uh, but as JFrog, we provide you with a complete solution for distribution as well. And that's, of course, JFrog Bintray. So JFrog Bintray is a distribution platform which was intended for the distribution needs. So, so the natural step will be not distributing from Artifactory, but taking the images from Artifactory to Bintray and distributing from there. And um, I'm going to quickly overview the features of Bintray for um, uh, for um, distribution Docker images, but not also, of course, and then we will have some time for Q&A. So um, what you see here is a list of um, facilities for the consumer. So when you want to distribute your images, your consumers, your users will benefit, of course, first of all, from a great download times. And that's because uh, Bintray is fully backed by CDN and you can get a very local server to any of your users to distribute your images to this user. This is very, very powerful and again um, unique to Bintray for distribution of 
bin tray, uh, bin tray images. Um, I'm going to talk about how we achieve a very, very good uptime in the next slide. Um, another feature that I'm already mentioned is, of course, the metadata. So do you remember that you annotated uh, the images with metadata for, for all, the, all the life cycle of those images? And now you can select which of the metadata is relevant from the, for the user. So maybe the build name and the build server where the, where the image were created are not very relevant, but you might have another information that you actually want to show to your consumer, and here you can select whether this metadata will or won't be presented for the consumer in Bintray, and this is very, very helpful as well. And another nice uh, feature is the version watch. I'm going to show it to you in a second. So let's for a second talk about the uptime. This is a very, very high level diagram of Bintray architecture. As you can see, we have serious clustered architecture for a, both the Bintray, uh, the Bintray um, user interface for your op uh, uploads, the REST API, the statistics, the audit servers, the async jobs, all of them are heavily clustered. But the download service, the one that actually promise your consumer uninterrupted downloads is clustered even more. So you can see that first of all, we have two clusters in um, US and um, in Europe backing up each other. And of course, the CDN itself serves as another level of clustering. So once people download the artifacts from the CDN, CDN caches those artifacts, caches those images, so we actually um, have another level of caching there. So it's actually three levels of caching that we're talking about, which promise a rather solid uptime, I would say almost perfect uptime for, for Bintray. We will be taking great pride of, of our uptime for the download service. And the version notifications is a little thing, but it's a very nice thing. It allows your users to get notifications about new new releases. Once they're out, they will get a nice email notification, and they will know that they need to update their they need to update their, their uh, images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, but of course. Um, the producer, which means you, is not neglected as well. Um, you get huge of, uh, of a huge amount of very, very important features for you, and the first and most important of it is, of course, integration uh, with, with Artifactory, because once you have your images ready uh, to go in your uh, release repository, you need a very simple way to get them on Bintray, and this can be achieved by one REST call, or if you prefer manual control of the process, one click of a button. Anyhow, this is very easy. Except of this artifactor integration, we have very rich REST API for all the others of, of, of your needs. You can bring um, images from other locations, not, from, uh, not only from Artifactory. You can examine your images. You can annotate them with metadata, of course, which brings me to the, to the next bu uh, bullet, and et cetera, et cetera. So metadata again, and I'm sorry I keep repeating it because, um, as I mentioned, I see it as one of the most important features of a modern binary repository, modern distribution platform. Uh, and again, uh, all the information from Artifactory, um, all the metadata from Artifactory is going to get on Bintray, and you can do smart things with this metadata in Bintray as well. Visibility into the downloads, I'm going to show you in a second um, what I mean by that, and of course, entitlements. Entitlements, again, it's, it's a must, okay? This is like a very, very fundamental feature of a public download center. And the entitlements are about giving the rights of download to people which are not on your platform. And I mean by that, you can work with teams and organizations in Bintray, but provide download to a subset of people which, who doesn't have account on Bintray. They might have authentication through their own systems. They might have just you know, a providing a, a download key which you um, sell them, and they, they are able to download. So you can select any set of people based on a various amount of properties which are not 
their username on Bintray and provide them with entitlement to download a certain, um, a certain image. And, and think about it, this allows you to actually manage a proprietary uh, images for sale. You can say, I want to manage my own licenses and only make downloads available for the people who have this license. And how, do, how can I um, determine the people that have license? By any system that you have in mind. Bindery supports a um, very flexible uh, entitlement model and, and uh, this allows you to really use Bintray as a download center, to, your, to really use it as an enterprise um, image hub for your, for your images. Getting back to, uh, to the visibility, um, those are the download insights, one of the ways that you can know who downloaded the, um, what from Bintray. So what we actually did, we harvested the logs for you and we got the interesting information out of it and you can specify which information of course you want to get into this comma separated value file uh, for example you can know the organization up to the office from which it was downloaded so you can see one of the images being downloaded from fidelity functionary bank in italy which means this is some you know um not existing company, and, and you can know what was downloaded and from, which, um, and from which organization. So you can, of course, do it once you have the raw logs, and we provide you with your own raw logs so you can harvest, that, uh, harvest them by yourself, but we already did all the heavy lifting for you. Before I get uh, to questions, um, now I would actually like to present you with the most important feature of both Artifactory and Bintray for, um, for Docker uh, development. And so this is a screenshot from um, the keynote of, uh, of DockerCon, and uh, this guy is Solomon Hikes, of course, the creator and the inventor of Docker that we all share huge respect to. And uh, he did a little show of hands. So first of all, he asked, who actually uses Docker? And of course, everybody raised their hand because this is a keynote of DockerCon. And then he asked the second question, who's using Docker and nothing else? And there wasn't a single hand in the audience because it doesn't make sense to use Docker and nothing else. Taking the containers analogy once again, it's like shipping empty containers. No one will want to do that for the purpose of just shipping. We don't use Docker just for sake of Docker. Docker is a platform. Docker is, is, is a, a mean to work with other things, which means that for sure, 100% guarantee, you have other technologies in use when you are using Docker. You might use Java, and then you ship your web application, your um, Java E applications as Docker containers. You might use Ruby, and then you have your Ruby application shipped as Docker containers. Or, or you might build an operation system with native code and then ship it as a Docker container. It doesn't matter. What it matters is you always have something else. And when you select your um, Docker registry, when you select where to distribute your uh, images from, it only makes sense to take one tool that will manage both your Docker stuff and the other stuff that you actually use Docker for. And of course, Artifactory brings the broadest set of supported technologies and Binter, of course, it's not only around Docker only. You can see here a, a, a subset actually of the technologies that we support and then you can understand that if you use any of those, if you use Python now with Docker, you can take a Python registry, uh, install it locally, manage it, babysit it, take care of its being up, 
of caching other Python modules, etc., etc., and then you need to do the same for the Docker registry. The technologies are different, the methodologies are different, the UI is different. You just have two tools that are in the same domain and kind of do the same thing, but not very much. Or you can t take one tool that takes care of all the binary needs in your organization, which includes all the binaries, all the modules for all the modular systems, all the binaries and all the modules for all the dependency management, which include Docker, but not only limited for Docker. And as I mentioned, I find it the greatest benefit of using a true versatile binary repository management and true versatile distribution platform that supports much more than Docker on top of using Docker only stacks. So with that, um, I would like to attend some questions now. We have 20 minutes, a lot of time to answer the questions. So um, first of all, the question about replication. Do we need to have multiple instances of Artifactory running over different locations, or we can get around with one instance of Artifactory only? Now, we're talking about replication, which means that we are talking about taking the binaries from one Artifactory instance to another, which of course means that we do need at least two Artifactory instances to actually be able to uh, replicate across those instances. Another question is um, regard the, the, the licenses when we, when we are talking about replication. And, and the answer is um, every replication is a, is a feature of Artifactory Pro version, and the Artifactory Pro version requires a license, which means then when you want to use replication across two Artifactory instances, you have to, to have two Artifactory licenses for them. Um, and, and the question is, I think I kind of answered it, but maybe it's worth repeating, um, regarding distribution from Artifactory and, and from Bintray and the difference between them. So as I mentioned, Artifactory is a viable option for distributing the images. For example, um, if you have internal distribution, you need to distribute the images for your team, and especially when the team is co-located in, in, uh, um, in one location, then um, it might make sense just to allow the team access to the, um, um, to the, to the release repository, and they will consume the Docker images from this repository. But when we are talking about distribution at scale, when we are talking about a large amount of users consuming your binaries, and, and of course that includes Docker images, from various locations, um, and they are not artifactory users, then Bintray may, makes much more sense, both because of the CDM, both because of the uptime, both because of the um, of the of the user experience, of course, Artifactory is oriented to the developers. You come to the UI and you say, "Okay, this is a developer tool. I can see it clearly." But when you distribute your images among other people who are not necessarily developers, they may be system integrators, they may be a few teams or or, or uh, other users. They actually might not um, want to experience the, the, the Artifactory UI, and for that, of course, Bintray is classic. And of course, it gets much more to you, for example, the insights of who downloads what, etc., etc. So hopefully, I answered um, this uh, as well. So let's see what else do I have. Um, Yeah, so by that, another question is on managing repositories, one repository for Docker and, and Vagrant images. So I think that maybe, maybe I need to clean up a terminology a little bit. So the term repository is highly overloaded in, in our industry. Um, you, you, can, you can refer to a de facto instance as a repository? And then the answer is, of course, yes. Um, 
a single um, a single artifactory instance can of course manage both vagrant boxes and um, docker images as well as any other supported technology. It could also manage jar files for Java and uh, NPM packages, uh, NuGet packages, etc., etc. All of them are definitely can be managed in a single artifactory instance. And if you refer to artifactory as a repository, the answer is yes. Um, if you will be a little more like fine-grained and define a repository as one of the repositories in one artifactory instance, then the question is no. In the artifactory, you should have a separate repository for different file types. You will have a repository of Docker images, and in the same artifactory instance, you will have a repository of Vagrant boxes. And this is fine. Artifactory is not limiting you in any way in, in the number of repositories that you want to have inside one instance. You can have dozens of repositories or hundreds of repositories in, in one instance, and they will intercollaborate. You will be able to do search across the repositories. You will be able to grant permissions acro across repositories. So if you have a group of developers that work both on Docker images and Vagrant boxes, you will be able to uh, provide support for, uh, to provide access to this uh, theme to both of the repositories. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that answers as well. Um, another interesting question that we actually hear a lot is what about Bintray on-premise in our company network? And, and, and we hear it a lot because um, there are enterprises which are big enough to hold their own internal distribution platform. And, and it's definitely something on our mind because we have this request over and over again. At the moment, this is not available. So you actually have two choices. You either trust our cloud, and, and of course, as I mentioned, uptime shouldn't be an issue, locality shouldn't be an issue, and of course, security, user management is also something that we take very, very seriously. So just manage your own private enterprise download center on our cloud, and then you close it completely to the outside world. Only the members of your BIND organization can download, or you distribute from on-premise artifactory instance, which I mentioned, all, all also a, a decent and, and valid uh, option. Yeah, so um, the question about, about promotion pipelines, um, would you just have different URIs for different repositories in promotion pipelines? And this is actually a great question because um, especially when we are talking about Docker, we do have a, a little bit of challenge in managing multiple repositories inside one artifactory server for Docker. And that's because of the way Docker works. So when you um, Docker registry, the origin of the Docker image is actually expressed in the tag, in the name of, 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 the Docker, of the Docker image. And it's expressed only in the way of host and the port. So, and, and, and here's a very good question of how can we support as Artifactory multiple repositories when we have a single host for all of them? How can we tag the um, images differently when the host is the same. And, and this mismatch comes, again, from the difference in maturity between the official Docker registry and Artifactory. Um, when the scheme of um, having a host name as an image was invented or, or was applied uh, on Docker images, um, I guess they didn't take into account this very powerful scheme of promoting, of promoting between the repositories under the same host. So uh, what we suggest is using a virtual host inside organization. So you will have a virtual host that actually points to artifactory slash dev and another virtual host that points to the same artifactory instance slash QA, and then you will promote between um, between the two. 
Um, another question is about virtual Docker repositories, and um, that's that's also a very good question uh, that we hear a lot, and it has direct relation with my previous answer. So one of one of the um, the pains that I mentioned is that Docker does not support multiple repositories from the same host, and it, it's especially important when we are talking about supporting remote repositories. So if I want to uh, cache um, the official Docker Hub and Bintray and some other remote repository in the same time inside one artifact or instance, all of them will have different URIs under the same uh, host. And that means that I will have that much, um, that much hosts in my virtual hosts a configuration. And once Artifactory will support a virtual repository for, uh, for Docker, which hopefully will happen very, very soon, all those multiple hosts will be able to unify under a single URL, provided a single virtual host, and simplify the configuration by a lot. Um, another question is about Artifactory. It's not very connected to, um, to our Docker uh, aspect of today's webinar, but I would like to answer it briefly because I have good news for, um, for whoever asked it. And the question is about um, support of multiple data stores for Artifact across multiple file systems. And, and this question comes from a very clear pain of uh, users having huge repositories, and and um, when when even the the hard drives uh, or or network attached storages cannot bear the the load of and the amount of of storage, and for for those users um, in the in the last version or version before last of Artifactory 3.8, we actually added support for S3 compatible. A data stores, which means that you can take um, S3 or, or Swift or any in-house system that can expose S3 compatible API and then actually have unlimited storage of artifacts behind Artifactory. Artifactory will even manage the gap between the eventually consistency that S3 uses and uh, a full transactional behavior that Artifactory has. So I hope uh, that will ease your, your pain, of course. Um, is running Artifactory as a container as flexible? Yes, of course. So that's something that I failed to, me, uh, to, to mention, and, and thank you for the question. Of course, Artifactory comes as, as a Docker container. Of course, when we're, when we're talking about Docker support, it would be um, very strange to not having Artifactory as, as, as a container itself. Uh, we have official Artifactory images, both for the open source version of Artifactory and the pro version of Artifactory on Bintray. And in our user manual, it's, it's a one-liner of how to download and install it. And of course, it's easy, it's Docker. Uh, so definitely, we do have it, and you're more than welcome to, uh, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, yeah, so, just to follow up, uh, just to follow up on my question, I mentioned that we have this challenge of uh, of using multiple repositories on the um, on the same uh, host, and um, one of the answers, the, the the most popular actually that we see is virtual host. Another option can be definitely a, a port. So uh, you can um, uh, you can select, you can assign different ports to uh, different URLs. Uh, using your um, HTTP server configuration, whether it will be Nginx or Apache. We have examples in our documentation for all of it, and you definitely can have like Artifactory 8080 for your uh, development repository, Artifactory 8081 for your QA repository, etc., etc., when um, eventually they all will hit the same port and will just go to different, different repositories. Um, question about REST API, um, whether it's possible to run AQL with REST API. Of course it is. Actually, until Artifactory 4 is out, that's the only way 
to run a AQL. We don't have the support in the UI and we don't plan to because Artifactory 4 is just around the corner. So if you want to use AQL, and I believe you do, um, then actually running it from a REST API is the right, is the right way to go. Um, I think I have one more question. Let me just find it here real quick. Okay, yeah. Um, thank you very much. So, A question about, and I have five minutes uh, to answer it, if you have any more, please feel free to add uh, more questions, uh, is about the artifactory storage. And, and I mentioned it briefly, but maybe uh, I have a couple of minutes to um, um, add more details. Of in, and the question is, how artifactory actually stores the artifacts? Um, what's going into the database, what's going into the file system, what topology is, is supported. And especially when I mentioned the, the checksum-based storage, how it works. So the, the basic idea is that the layout of the artifacts and even the names of the artifacts can and should be detached from their representation. And by adding this additional layer of abstraction, we actually gain much more flexibility and performance benefits. So how it works? All the artifacts stored under their checksums, and that's why it's called the checksum-based storage. And the metadata about what the names of the artifacts, what the path the artifacts should go, is just as any other metadata as all the rest. As, for example, which, uh, how these artifacts were built and, and which build number uh, which build number um, it was built with, right? So we have the artifacts, which are just sequence of bytes stored under the checksum of this sequence of bytes, and all the metadata, including the names. So we, we store the artifacts on the file system, we store the metadata in the database, and, and the, the, the file system part is actually pluggable, because, again, there are many ways to store sequence of bytes. We can store it in file system. We can store it in the network attached storage. We can store it, as I mentioned, in any S3 compatible um, uh, data store. Or we can store it in uh, even in a database. So you have a lot of options where to put sequence of bytes. And by, with this flexibility, we actually can then show it to you as it was a normal file store with paths and directories and everything that you are actually used to. But it's actually detached, which gives you great, great deal of flexibility. And um, it has also very significant uh, performance implications. One of them is, of course, the speed of the promotion, because changing the location of an artifact inside a repository doesn't, it has nothing to do with the sequence of bytes in the storage. It's just changing the metadata about it. And um, it also uh, does a great deal in terms of performance when we are talking about locking. Um, having a finite immutable sequence of bytes on the disk means that we never need a write lock on this sequence of bytes again. So which means that the storage itself can be um, lock free because we only read from it and never override it or move it around or, or toss it again because this thing is there. It's the same sequence of bytes for everything. So um, I think we are running out of time. And I would like to thank you for attending uh, this uh, webinar. I hope it successfully set the stage for the upcoming webinars in this series. And in the next one, we will uh, see how to um, manage uh, and uh, how to store and promote and build uh, images uh, with Artifactory as an image registry. Um, and um, then it will be 
a little bit more technical with uh, demos, with hands-on, but of course, uh, as usual, with your questions and everything. Um, just, mention, just to mention two things, um, when the webinar is over, you will be uh, redirected to a short survey. Please answer it. We do care about your feedback, and you will get an awesome T-shirt in return. And the recording will be available uh, for you um, in the following couple of days. Thank you very much for attending, and see you in our next webinar.